Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Art 192, Digital Imaging with Photoshop um, for the spring semester of 2022. Today, I'm going to be um, demonstrating quick fixes in Photoshop. This entire lesson probably won't last the entire hour. We will see. Um, but they are just that. They are quick fixes. You know, they're, it's a quick ways in Photoshop of um, making some minor, some significant changes without much muss or fuss. Okay, so that's what I'm going to work on today. So that we're going backwards now to lesson five. I covered lesson six in the previous weeks, and now we're going to move um, backwards a bit, and we're going to do lesson five. I thought for your postcard assignment, um, learning how to make selections and how to create soft masks and things like that would be much more beneficial to learn those and to master those right away. Okie doke. Well, the first one that we start with here, they have several images that we're supposed to correct. You'll see we start with, we have a photograph here where the woman, um, because of a flash, has red eye. And end file looks like this. Now they've done a couple of other things to this. They added um, an adjustment layer to brighten up her face a little bit. This is a sort of thing that all of you should take into consideration though, when you're working on your projects or you know, for yourself or for the class or for another class for that matter. Okay, so the one thing that I did, um, and this is, I will you know, continue to stress what I like to do is rather than work on the background layer, I always make a copy of it. Okay. And then what I did, um, let me go ahead and throw this away. Um, and I'll show you right now. I did it ahead of class just to show you is that it's kind of dark. So with the copied layer selected, go to adjustments, Select, um, you can either select curves or you can select um, levels. I like levels. And you can see that we're really short on the high end um, of values. So just click auto and see what, where that gets us. And that already, that brightens everything up. If you wanna go back and adjust the darks and make some of them darker, you know, make some changes to it, that's fine. But that by itself makes a significant improvement. So to get rid of the red eye, it is the simplest thing ever. And in recent iterations of Photoshop, they've made really significant improvements to it. Before you'd have to go through two, three, four steps in order to get something really good. The red eye tool is found at the very bottom underneath the spot healing brush, healing brush patch and content aware move. So it's at the very bottom. This is what it looks like. Um, there are some settings up here, pupil size. Um, I always start with the default settings of 50%, um, darken them out 25%, and then I come back over here and I make sure that I have the correct layer selected. And right over the, the dark eye or the, the red eye, um, click and voila, it, it makes a change, it's perfect. If you need to make changes, you can always undo, you can always change the pupil size, you can always change the dark and amount until you get an adjustment that works for you. So there, in just less than a minute, we made significant in, um, improvements to this photograph, which is a nice photograph, but um, especially because of the red eye would not be acceptable as is, and because it was overall kind of dark, that wouldn't be good either. Okay, doke. So I'm going to close these files. Okay, I'm not going to save. And I don't want to save the end one either. And so now I'm not going in any order. So here's the start file for the Japanese garden. And what they want us to do here is to remove this little rock and this reflection down here. They've made lots of improvements. Um, what we can start with though, and this is a little, I'm doing this a little differently than I've done it in the past, is that I'm having greater confidence in the um, object selection tool. 
So what I'm going to do again, before I do anything is I'm going to go ahead and make command J make a copy of the layer. So I can always go back to it if I want. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click and drag to make sure that I have not only the rock, but the reflection selected. Okay, it's going to do its magic and let's see what it comes up with. Okay. So we can go ahead and did I select the right one? I didn't do it right. Never mind. Oh, yes, I did. Let's undo that. So I have um, the selection made. And now what I want to do is go to um, File, Content Aware, Fill. Um, let's go ahead here. Where are we? Um, maybe it's under Edit. Content Aware, Fill. There we go. Well, let's see what it comes up with. Now, there are some colors that I don't want in here. For example, um, I want to get rid of the fish to be used as an example. So when I have this selected here, I can come back here and I can get rid of some of this. So I don't want all of that. Let me go back and invert that. Um, I, I messed up. I told you how simple this is and it's I messed up. So let me cancel this. I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to use it, do it the way that we did before. So um, let me go back up here. I thought I was being clever, and I always get in trouble when I um, try to be clever. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to select the quick selection tool. And I'm going to draw around it a little bit. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to even do that. I'm going to take my um, polygonal lasso tool. And I'm going to draw around it. This actually works a little bit better, I think, leaving a little bit of space around it. You don't want to get too tight or make sure that you leave enough space around it so it has an area to select. Come on. Use as a sample. There we go. So now I can take this. And now that I have extra space, the others did a good job for selecting it, but I want to do this a little bit differently. So now with this selected, I can go to File. And I can go to Content Aware, Fill. I'm sorry, it's under Edit. Keep forgetting. Come on, edit, content aware, fill. Let's see what comes up. There we go. Now, why is that doing that? I'm supposed to see, there is the preview right there. It's okay, but now what I wanna do is I'm going to remove some of these areas that it's copying from. So over in my original image here, I don't want it to take any color and I don't want it to take any details from this area here. So I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna remove a bunch of this and see if it makes a difference here. And it's a start, but we still might have to go over with the um, clone stamp tool and make adjustments. And if that doesn't work, we can come back again. We can paint some of that back in. I'm holding down the option key, alt key on the PC and see if that makes a bit of a difference here. We want to refine the rocks back here. And if that looks OK, no. So that didn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and remove some of that again. Uh, let's remove some of it. and see what we get. But the preview over to the right gives us a pretty good idea of what, what it's gonna look like. Well, for right now, um, 
it's still going through its motions here. You see what we get. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. OK. So it got rid of some of it, but what it did is it took from other areas and put it back in. So my recommendation to get this replaced would be now to use the clone stamp tool. So what I'm going to do over here is select that. We want it to be normal. We can adjust the brush size right now on my computer. It's really small. So I'm going to enlarge it. And I'm going to pull from down here and move upward. So if I hold down Option key and click, it samples it. And now when I come up, I can begin to replace. So that's all you have to do. And you're going to fiddle with it. And again, you don't want repetition in here. So we're going to come back. Now I'm going to leave it at this for a moment. Let's go back some of that again. There we go. We can leave maybe some of that flora and fauna in there. But it got rid of most of it. I should probably bring some of this over. Notice that there's repetition down here that I want to get rid of that. So that's that's that. We could also bring the fish over here and move that in. That might be kind of a fun thing to try. Let me go ahead and again make the selection of this area here. And I'm and I'm going to use a tool that's similar to that. I want it to use the content aware move tool. So instead, I'm going to go back up here to where we have, um, I have the last one that I had selected was the red eye tool. And I want to select content of where I move. So let's try that. And I can select that and we can move it up and see if I have it. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Let me undo that. <clears throat> let's go back. There we go. I want content aware move. So I'm going to click. Now, why isn't that selecting it? It's not. Well, that's not going so well, so well either. That's kind of weird. Um, that's weird. Let me make sure. I, oh, I know why. Because I have the wrong layer selected. Again, see, I can't talk and chew gum at the same time. So I'm going to select the original layer, not the layer that has all of that. I should really co combine these two. So before I do, I'm going to make sure that both of these layers are selected. And if I hit Command E, that will simply flatten these two. What I prefer to do, though, is hit Shift Option Command E. And notice what it does. It does create a com combination image but it leaves the original layers um, intact underneath it. So now I can take this and now let's try content aware move and let's move this up like so. Maybe that will help us. And I'm gonna click okay. See if that makes a difference. It won't, you're not supposed to copy it, just supposed to move it. Again, the, um, the work that they put in behind doing all of this is pretty incredible. So that does a pretty good job. There might be a little bit of subtle retouch, but that's not bad. I think that's a pretty good retouch. And we could soften the edges of this um, here. And if we needed to, we could add a uh, shadow or a reflection underneath, shadow and reflection. But we're, you know, it, it still, it makes, uh, a lot less work doing these using these new tools. So I'm going to go ahead and close these two. I'm going to save that one. And I don't want to save that one. Um, now we run into a different situation. And we have the end one where the background and the glass are both in focus. If we look at the start file, we have two separate layers <clears throat> that aren't perfectly registered. But what we need to do is we need to, where the, and one of them, the glass is out of focus 
And in the other, the background is out of focus. So in the first one, this top one, the glass is in focus, or no, I'm sorry, the background is, if I turn that off, <clears throat> the glass is in focus and the background is not. So I wanna make sure that both are <clears throat> visible. <coughs> Hold down the shift key, select both. I should probably make a copy of both of these, but. For demonstration purposes, I'm not. <clears throat> um, and now what I want to do is I want to go to File. <clears throat> and I want to go to Automate. And I want to go to um, no. Nope. Let's go to Edit. I keep going to the wrong one. So I want to auto-align layers. So that's under the edit menu. I apologize, it's not under the file. Now, when I do that, just leave it to automatic. <clears throat> and now they are automatically aligned. And now when I turn one off and the other one, um, perfect, you can't tell the difference other than the focus. And again, with both of them selected, I can go back to edit now. And one more time, now I can say automatic auto blend. And again, just leave it automatic with stack, stacked images, goes through its motions. And before you know it, it combines the two. And when it does, it will create layer masks for them. So it works in a very non-destructive way. Um, so let's leave that. And there we go. Okay. And in addition to that, it created a nice positive one on top of that. So there we go. Notice the masks that it makes for these. Pretty cool. So that's another way. If you have an image where you've, <coughs> excuse me, have a shallow depth of field for uh, an object in the foreground, and then another photograph with um, your depth of field, um, focus mostly on the background, then you can com easily combine the two. And you don't, don't need to have a tripod for this. It would probably be helpful, but you don't need that. Okie doke. So there's a glass. I don't want to save it. And I don't want the end one. The next one is the egret. Now this is the end. And the start file is perfectly Everything is in focus. Um, if we look at the end, part of it is out of focus. So the out of focus, since that's the, the majority of the, the, the photograph, helps us to focus on the egret itself. And I believe it's an egret, may not be. Um, it is, okay. So to get to that, what we want to do is, again, go to the start file, or make a copy of it. And what I want to do is I want to go under filter and I want to go under blur. Um, I'm going to use smart blur and I want to use iris blur. Now you might experiment with field blur, tilt shift, half blur, spin blurs. There's all kinds of different blurs. They want us to use the iris blur in this. When that pops up, you'll notice that we have a little ellipse here. And what that does is that we can do a variety of things just by clicking anywhere in there and moving, we can determine where our focus is and where it's out of focus. If I want, I can move these little widgets here and stretch them or make them narrower. And I can also go back in and we can determine from the blurred area to where it goes into focus, how sharp a drop do we want this to be? So I'm gonna pull that in just a little bit. And then the little widget in the middle tells us how much of a blur we want. So I can really crank it up all the way or I can soften it. So it's just a little bit of a blur, almost unnoticeable. And then when I'm happy with it, just click the checkbox and we're done. 
Okay, so that's another thing. Um, I I strongly recommend that you guys um, practice and use some of the other blur te techniques. So I'm going to close that. Not saving. And I'm going to close the end file. So now we have, <clears throat> again, a start file of some columns. We have an end, call, end file where they are a little bit straighter. So we're getting some <clears throat> lens distortion in here. Um, the way to fix that is, again, pretty simple. Um, that happens to a lot of people when you get too close to, um, especially an architectural structure, and you start to get um, due to having kind of a wide angle lens, it starts to bend the perspective. So what we're going to do here now, we're going to go back to filter. And it's a good idea when you're using filters um, to make a copy of the layer first, because filters, um, for the most part, are permanent. They are destructive. So what I want to do down here <clears throat> is I want to use lens correction. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, and we're going to auto scale image. We could always turn that off. I'm going to switch to custom. Okay. And we can settings default, you know, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and where we have chromatic aberration, we can fix that. We can also remove distortion. So right now it's set to none. And now when I stretch this, when I slide this over, Notice that the columns are now straightening out. And at the same time, it is um, um, it doesn't do a perfect job, but it does a pretty darn good job. Um, but that's that. If you want to use the vertical, play with that. You know, that works well too for certain things. Horizontal perspective. So you can play with that as well. And there's other tools that we have to play with perspective. So I want to get rid of all of this. Make sure that this is set to zero. That's it for that. So that gets rid of our lens distortion. There's another one, um, depth of field blur that I would like to show you that I, it's a project that I was work, I've been working on for myself. Um, and show you how that works. So there is, again, another one, columns. Save and end that one. So now what we have um, are, is a bridge and we have um, a train and notice that they're on separate layers. The train perspective does not match the bridge. So that's what we want to do. If we look at the final one, you can see that the train looks pretty believable, like it's sitting in perspective on the bridge. So to do that, what we're going to do is select the layer of the train. And then I want to go to um, filter. And I want to use, let's see. No, hold on here. Layer. I'm drawing a blank at the moment. Hold on here. I want to use, let's go to under distort here for a minute. No, that's not it. Um, why can't I think of it? Edit. Here we go. We want to use perspective warp under the edit menu. Now it's a two-step process. What I want to do first is define the layout. So I'm going to click and drag here, like so. And I'm going to now, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Let's go back. Let me cancel that. I didn't want to do that again. Let's click and drag. I didn't want that. Let's go back again. And I want to go to
with file, edit, and I want to use perspective warp. Okay, so let me try again. Click and drag. And now what I want to do is I need to move over each of the points and I need to try to, to match the perspective of the train as best I can. So if that means moving this in a little bit, moving this in a little bit, actually maybe the, um, the smokestack and the train is a good indication. And then I need to take this bottom part and I need to move this up to match the bottom of the train wheels. So I'm trying to get as close as I can to the perspective of the train. There we go. And now I can go ahead and I can select warp. And with warp selected, I can now move this down and it is doing just that. So I want the bottom to match the train tracks. And I want this to come down so it's in perspective. So as I'm moving that, notice how it's now matching the perspective of the tracks in the photograph. There you have it. Click OK on the checkbox. And we have something pretty good. Okie doke. So that works not in all situations, but in some, uh, some instances, what you may need to do is maybe you're placing a car on uh, two photographs together, one of a car, one of a, another one of a road. And the perspective of the car doesn't quite match the road that you're putting it on. Well, this would be a good tool to use to match that. Okay. The other one that they want us to do, and I'll go ahead and I'll close these. Is by taking and combining a number of photographs together. What I want to do is I want to go to file and I want to go to automate. And I want to do a um, photo merge. Okay, so this is taking multiple pictures and it's creating basically a um, panoramic view. Now, it, this works really, really well. You don't have to have your, your um, camera on a tripod. The only thing that you need to concern yourself with is to make sure that there's adequate overlap for each photograph that you take. So I'm gonna select photo merge and it's gonna ask me where I'm gonna get my photographs. So what I want to do is I want to browse the folder in our um, lesson file. And here, is, here are the files for the panoramic view. I want to open those files. And let's go ahead and click on one. You can see that there's a combination of four of them. I want to select open for all of those. I'm just going to use the automatic setting, but in addition to that, what I want to do is I want to select vignette removal. And for those of you who aren't aware of it, maybe for those of you who have had photography would know, is that's when the corners of your photograph darken. That's the vignette, but I want that to be removed. If there's any geometric distortion, as we saw with the columns, I want that removed when it's combined together. And then the last part is that there's gonna be some transparency in combining these images. And what it will do is it will take content aware fill and it will fill those blank areas with, um, you know, take from the surrounding areas of the photographs and fill it. It's not perfect, but it's darn close. Now what it's gonna do, it's gonna open the files. It's gonna go through its, its motions to get a final result. It's aligning them all. It's determining, you know, from overlap, what is needed, what isn't needed. 
And the only thing that I found um, problematic with this in the past is that the horizon isn't perfectly horizontal. You can see that it's got it. Now it's gonna fill these background areas. There we have it. So now it's already stitched them together in a brand new photograph. Now probably what I would wanna do, I don't wanna save it. What did I do here? I wanted to deselect it, but now I want to straighten the horizon. So we can use the crop tool for that. We can go back to the crop tool. We can go ahead, come on, crop tool. Where am I at here? Crop tool. Deselect. Um, where are you, crop tool? No, I don't want that. I want, where'd it go? Should be under here. No. Probably staring right at it. No, you're not there. Well, let me reset some things here. And it went into how I always go back over here. And I am, um, I'm going to reset essentials. And it didn't do a thing. So where's our crop tool? Am I staring right at it? Is it under here? No. Where are you? No, not there. Not there. Where did it go? What am I missing here? Well, let me go to help and see if I can't find it there. I don't know why I don't see it. Crop tool. It's not available. Why? Why, why, why? That's what I want. So let me turn these off. Now let's try. No, it's not, not letting me. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. While well, that might be the problem. Save as. And we'll go ahead and save on my computer. And I'm going to save it in here. And I'll call Untitled Panoramic 1. Just leave it there. Now let's go up and see. Since it wasn't saved, we can go to image. And it's still not allowing me to crop. Um, why is that? <laughs> let's say sample layers. No. What happened to our crop tool? So let's try again, go to help, go to crop, and it's grayed out. I can always use image rotation. I mean, that would work, edit. And I could use free transform, trans transform the whole thing. So command T to transform. But that's not going to crop it the way I want it. So now I could do that. And I could, if I had a horizontal rule, I can make sure that it's you know fixed and then use um, content aware fill over each of those areas. But that's what the crop tool is supposed to do. 
So let me cancel that. And I'm going to leave it and come back and see why it's not allowing me to crop it. And I can't even find the crop tool. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know why. And it's probably, I'm staring right at it. It's usually right over here. So let me try again. Let's come back over here. I'm going to use um, Reset Essentials once again. And see if it pops up. It's usually one of the first tools that comes up here, but it's not available. So it says Untitled. Let's go ahead and save. And see if edit. Image. Yeah, crop still isn't available. I don't know why. Very strange. Um, again, I'm talking to you and I can't figure it out. Well, let me do one more thing before, uh, and it, it involves depth of field. Um, it requires a separate um, channel in order to do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to one of my files. I'm gonna to go to file, open. And I'm gonna to go to the desktop where I've saved it. And it's in a current rendering I did. I built this in a 3D modeling program. So um, this is like a two-step process. So here's my rock gallery. And I'm gonna to go to, um, let's go to date modified. Okay, so I want my rock gallery 28 JPEG. And you'll notice I have this 3D model of a gallery and this guy is standing here and looking out on the street, but the street is in focus. Well, I want it to be out of focus. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open another file that I have here that I was able to generate in my 3D modeling program. So for those of you who are taking 3D modeling or plan on doing that, I want the depth of field to be opened up. And it, so it gives us an area where we can work on the depth of field. And this is, it's just a grayscale image. But what I need to do now is say, select all and copy. And both of these images are identical in size. Now I can go back to the art gallery and again, under channels, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a brand new channel. And I'm going to paste the one that I created in there. Deselect. And now I can go ahead and I can go back to RGB settings, make sure that that's turned off that. Because if I leave that on, that's not what I want. Now I can go to filter and I can go to blur. And I want to go to camera blur. Come on, where are you? Blur. Box blur, lens blur. Where are you? Something is wrong. Oh, lens blur. There we go. Right there. Where's camera, camera, camera blur. And now what I can do is I can if you're looking at this, we can see that now the background based on that mask that I had applied is slightly out of focus. It's not, I mean, I can increase the radius. I can increase the, the, the blur distance. I can also, you know, if I really want this blurred, I can really crank this up and make it 
really out of focus, but then it also blurs some of the, the gallery, which I don't want. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this back to 10. And there you have it. It's another thing that all of these filters can do. And they're not, they, not just for Photoshop. As I said, I built this in a 3D modeling program and then I used depth of field in order to do that, create a, created a rendering of it. And by combining those two layers, I was able to create a desired result. Now I could have objects um, out of focus in the foreground as well if I wanted to, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And now, because it's really bugging me, I wanna go back to our um, panoramic view. And let's go to layers. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn all the layers back on. And let's see why I don't have it. Go to image. And crop is still undeselected. So as soon as I figure it out, I'll let you guys know. I don't know why I don't see the tool. I don't know why it is, um, I'm just looking in the wrong place. Um, normally it's right up here. So there you have it, quick fixes for today. Um, most of them are pretty easy to do. Most of them came out pretty well. And this one, as you can see how the horizon tilts that I would wanna fix. And if I can't continue, can't find the, um, the crop tool, then what I would do and use a straighten feature to straighten it, um, I would go back with, um, uh, rotate and I can rotate it with free transform and then use the um, content to where fill to fill the corners and that would work. Okay. I have enough time for that. So let's go ahead and just to show you it, it different from the book. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just guesstimating it. This make sure that it is horizontal now. Click okay. Now I can go ahead with my selection tool and I can select this area here. And I can go to um, file and I can go to content aware fill. Or is it under edit? See, I'm constantly, I'm not doing well today. Yeah, content aware fill. There we go, we're good. So that works. I don't have to change a thing. Okay. So why isn't, there we go. It's going through its motions. It's still filling it in. You select. So now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that both of these layers are combined. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just use Command E to make sure that they are both combined. So select them both, Command E, and do the same for the other corners. Deselect, select this area here. And again, go to edit. Content to where fill. There we go. And it should look just fine. There we go. It's going through the motions of fig figuring out what it needs to fill. I'm just gonna click okay for today. And it fixed it perfectly. So again, even when I can't, something is disabled, there are other ways around this to make it work for us. And you can also see there is a little glitch here that some of the, um, the railing here is missing. So another way to fill that in is to crop it further or go back in with the clone stamp tool and build that back in. 
So there you have it. Um, overall, pretty impressive for a uh, quick fix in taking four separate photographs and combining them into one. Okay. Um, that's it for today. Let me make sure that I have everybody here. I have Bella. I have Elizabeth Gonzalez. I have um, uh, Maria. And I have Paula. Okie doke. Any questions before we leave today? Before I end the recording? Before I end our webinar? Okay. Well, make sure that you're current with your lessons. Uh, make sure that you are working on the postcard, or if you decide to use the selfie photo bomb, that um, they do take time to do pro to do well properly. And um, yeah, make sure that you have your lessons done and that these that you're working on the the project because it will be done soon. Okay. What do you do to become more creative? I think the answer to that is just to do um, more work. So I don't know if you consider what I do yeah, um, creative, but um, I don't know. I've shown my portfolio before, but it's pretty different than what you would see in here. It's just a matter of doing more work. Well, first, I think it's yeah, going if if you're going through these exercises, um, this isn't that creative. Um, but then in time, you will discover that you have a, I think a a passion for a certain to do certain things, and you just start to do that, and you do more of it, and. Um, as you do more of it, it will lead you to different places. You know, these are the sculptures that I do. Most of them are generated in the computer. And then when I output them, I can either use laser cutting or 3D printing or 2D printing. So if we get to the end of this, and I, you know, I think, I mean, these are very different than what we are learning in class. But it's using all my tools and knowledge that I've, you know, developed over the years in programs like Photoshop and 3D modeling and Illustrator and whatever to create, to come up with, a, you know, what I have here. I think at some point too, when you're out of school um, and you're not being told what to create, then you have to ask yourself what it is, what is it that I am passionate about? What do I want to do? For you, if it's portraiture and you like photography, that's great. Um, I have a side thing that I do too, is that um, these are the ones that were done kind of both in Photoshop as well as 3D modeling. So I created this piece here is a 3D model and printed it. This was created with photography. And then the whole thing combined was put together in Photoshop. And I did a whole series of these. Now, how do these relate to me? It's um, for myself, the past few years, it's discovering what is your true self? What makes up you as a person? What are the things in your life? And so taking all of those skills and kind of putting them together in a, you know, in a blender, and this is what comes out. All the sculpture, all the photographs. And then if I go back to my about page, you can see that I have, um, actually, I'm going to go to, probably boring all of you. I'm going to go to, you know, these are, this is the 3D gallery that I built. Um, during the pandemic, and I put all of my artwork in it. So it requires knowledge of, you know, Photoshop, it requires the knowledge of 3D um, uh, modeling, um, it requires knowledge of web design, that sort of thing. 
So I'm using all of those skills. But in addition to that, um, I like photographing sunsets with my um, phone. I don't use anything other than my phone. And the first three pieces you see here are more conceptual, but the rest of these are just sunset photographs that I take with my phone. So they're pretty straightforward. So that's the direction that I've headed over the years. Um, and again, if we go back here and we look at my old work, um, I look at my old artwork, these pieces were based on, I was interested in the, in the theater of the absurd. And so, um, a lot, a number of my sculptures and that sort of thing were based on plays by um, Eugene Ionesco and um, sort of thing. So this, you know, it's kind of a build up to what I do now. But again, I don't have a unique or a singular style. Um, that can hamper you in your career if you're not careful. And again, I, I do a little of everything. I do what um, pleases me. But that's because I'm a fine artist. If you have desire to become a commercial artist, um, that's a different ball thing altogether. Then I think the class that we're working on, and that's th that you're in now, to learn the basics of Photoshop. And then in addition to that, um, uh, be able to follow guidelines that are given to you. That's what commercial art is all about. Um, you're gonna be given instructions by an art director, a client, and with a set of criteria, and then you're gonna have to follow through and hopefully you please the client. And if you do, then you're in good shape. If you don't, then you have to go back and start over again. Um, and I did that for several years as a commercial illustrator, but I didn't like it. So as you can see over my 30 plus years as a fine artist, um, my artwork has taken a bunch of different directions. And probably the most recent pieces that you looked that you saw first are a more a better indication of what I'm currently interested in. Installations, um, sculpture, 2D prints, you know, digitally. Um, I don't paint anymore, but I have. So um, yeah, there you have it. I don't know. I'm happy with what I do. Do you see um, for the relevance in our class? You're just learning the basics in our class. Well, I appreciate you um, liking the sharing. Um, but it is um, learning the basics of Photoshop. To enhance, I mean, Photoshop is probably one of the most asked for um, tools to use, whether you're an illustrator, you're a graphic designer, or you um, maybe are in, uh, as I said, maybe you're selling real estate and you have to take your own photographs of the property that you're selling or buying or that sort of thing. And you need to retouch it and, uh, and you know, improve it to make it really uh, desirable for um, prospective clients. Well, this would allow you to put those skills to use. So it's in many um, job uh, descriptions, Photoshop, whether you're in the creative arts or not, is one of the, the programs it's most asked for. You know, as I said, we're just kind of going through the basics, but um, where you take it afterwards is entirely up to you. Okay, well, that's it for me. I did my show and tell today. Um, there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the recording. I'm going to say goodbye and we're going to be, um,